Josh, we're going to go back in time, back in the beginning of all of this. So when did you decide to become a developer? Free your body and your mind. When was the little thing that sparked in the back of your mind? Like, hold on, hold on. There's something here behind the screen that I can inspect. And there's an HTML. There's a head tag. There's a body. When was the first time that you saw that and you was like, wow, I could do this? Let me back up even further. I didn't know that existed. The whole reason <laughs> that I wanted to, well, the whole reason I became a developer is because I wanted to work remote. And mm -hmm. I was sitting at my mechanical engineering job in a clean room with like a bunny suit with like my face covered and, you know, like the whole deal with the glasses. And um, I was sitting in there and I was like, I don't, this is like the rest of my life. I don't do something else. Like, I'll just go to another engineering job or another one. So I, I Googled like remote jobs. I noticed the only thing was developer jobs. And I was like, all right. And so I had heard of like boot camps on the news or something like that. And so I Googled it and then I basically applied for it and I knew nothing and I had like a little entrance test with like, you know, reverse this array. How long is this array? Like sort it out, like stuff that is 101 code. But for me at the time, I was like, all right, I don't know how to do this. So I was messaging my friend, getting him to help. And somehow I convinced my boss to let me leave early a couple of days a week to go to this school. And that's basically how it happened. Um, but nice. like it made sense for me to do it because like I grew up, I played video games, built my own computers, always like every Christmas gift was like electronics. Like I, I don't want anything like sports. I just want electronics. Like, but it, I skipped the part where you learn how to code, you know? So that's what happened. Okay. Okay. So you basically, you was like, okay, I'm working in this field. I'm like, I'm not happy here. I want to do something that I could be happy and I could still work remotely um and developing applications web applications is here so let me learn this so when you came at that at that moment right what made you decide to go to a boot camp instead of learning this by yourself i tried to learn it by myself first and then i i realized i was getting stuck to the point where i was annoying i was pissing off my friend enough he, he's just like josh i can't help you all the time and like, you know, I'd Google and stuff and I'd try Stack Overflow. I didn't really know what that was at the time. And I was like, all right, maybe I'll just use what I've saved up since I started working and I'll just go to this boot camp. So that way I can have someone I can just, you know, ping off of, just go back and forth. Cause I'm the guy that asked why like five times before I'm satisfied with an answer. Like I need to know how stuff works. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes on Stack Overflow, if you have to ask a question as a noob, like it's pretty notorious for basically getting shit on on stack overflow as a new yeah so. yeah no because yeah. everybody man, thinks like they are the smartest guy in the room and it was like you don't know this <laughs> it's like you know i hate that um listen stack, stack overflow is like one of the worst places i try not to even go in there um at all like if anything i go to directly like if i have any type of issue i go directly to like let's say if i have an issue with react or uh, polymer or whatever i go directly to the the report um and just put an issue and be like okay i'm having an issue with this feature with react or i'm having an issue with with this or i say hey does anybody know how to do this i'd rather just do it through github because github will have people that really want to help you because everybody's excited about the library or the the framework etc and they will help you out but places like stack overflow is like a place where people is just trying to get points and they want to see who gets the most questions answered it's like reddit like it's, yeah. it's the worst like so the thing is like the whole mindset you want to have in this job which took me a while to figure out but eventually i did figure out like you want to stay a student right you want to stay humble better to be humble than yeah. be humbled by someone else that's gonna again come eventually knock you off anyways and so like um you just have to have that student mindset of like okay i don't know this but i'll figure it out like some people like being the smartest guy in the room because it does whatever's their pride. But like, I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm not trying to be the smartest guy in the room. If I'm the smartest guy in the room, I'm in the wrong room. Time to move on. That means I'm not learning anymore. Exactly. That's how I feel too. I look, I like to be just humble with people. When it comes to like, you know, learning to code or, or even teaching other people or, or anything, I tell them straight up, listen, I'm not the best. If you think that you're going to get the best out there, you know, this is not the place for you. What I do is I come here and I teach it in a way where you're going to be able to understand it and be able to get everything to get a job, right? Uh, there's guys who come in and be like, 
I'm a genius. I have a master in this. I'm a this and that. And then somebody who comes in out of nowhere pulls their car and be like, hey, man, you're actually wrong. Or they'll be like, you don't know everything. Da, da, da. You know what I mean? Or there's times here on YouTube where people come in and give opinions on things that they have no experience on. And then a, a real experienced developer in that topic comes in, pulls out the car and is like, yo, bro, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know, so it's better to just be humble and ask questions. You know, come in, ask questions, and, and you know, you'll get the best uh, experience as a developer when, when you do that. It's just like going humble, you know what I mean? It's, so you're gonna like, you're gonna struggle with that like imposter syndrome where you never feel qualified to do the job. That's what I did at my first job. Um, basically I applied, I guess I'll just continue after that. Like, so I applied to my first job on AngelList. It was a full-time, full stack, um, front-end developer job. They didn't say the stack at the time. And uh, I went in and they interviewed me. They gave me a Jasmine JavaScript test. Had no idea, didn't even know what a unit test was at that point. Took it home, struggled through it, managed to complete it. They brought it back. Uh, somehow they were like, yeah, this looks good to, to like both of our surprises. We were like, what? Because I was just so fresh. And um, they were like, this looks really good, but we just can't hire you because you, you don't have enough experience. So, I mean, and like he goes to hand me the resume. He's like, we really appreciate your time, Josh. Here you go. And I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. How about part-time? Let me do something. Like, I'll, like I didn't say I was doing it for free. I just, I didn't want to go that desperate yet. And then like right after I said that his eyes got a little wider, he's like, he's like, you know what? All right, we'll think about it and get back in touch with you. And I just, I just left. I was like, all right, well, that's over. And then about like three weeks later, they called me back and they're like, yeah, we want to bring you on part time. And I, like when they did, I asked, I asked if I could have remote two days a week, which was probably pushing it. Like, but somehow they still said yes, like first job and asking for partial remote. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. I just thought like, I, I you know, I just thought I was the king because they said yes. And and then they were like, and we'll pay you eighteen dollars an hour. And I was like prepared to work for free. So eighteen dollars an hour to me was like, holy crap! Like yeah. this is now now I'm a rock star. And then I like went in on the first day and he walks over and he like slams this Ruby on Rails book on my desk. He's like, here you go. Um, got your first task for you. Let me know when you're ready. Just uh, get reading. And I was like, oh boy, here we go. And then like, that is when the imposter syndrome moment like happened. And I was like questioning every single life decision that I've ever had up until that point in my life. Like, I was like, what did, what did I get myself into? This is not for me, run away.